guys, I'm Emmeline, aka Winterstar Cosplay, and in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to make two different versions of Dream's Mask from the Dream SMP. The first thing you're going to want to do is print out your patterns. There's one pattern that I have for just a round circular mask and another one for a broken mask. Then of course you're going to want to cut both of them out. The main material that I'm going to be using to build these masks is Warbla's Black Art. Warbla actually sponsored this video and this cosplay and they sent me this Warbla's Black Art to use to construct the masks. After you've actually printed out your pattern and finished cutting it out, the next thing you need to do is trace it onto the Warbla's Black Art. I found that just a regular pencil works great for this. Cutting through Warbla can sometimes be a little bit tricky and so to help with this you can take your heat gun and lightly heat up the area that you want to cut through. This makes it a little bit softer and much easier to cut. To cut out the Warbla I just use a regular sharp box cutter. Make sure to leave some extra space around the outside of the pattern when you cut it out. This way you can sandwich EVA foam in between them to make it a little bit thicker. Speaking of which, you will also need to cut out one circle of 2mm EVA foam. Once you're done, you should have two circles of Warbla's Black Art and then a smaller circle of 2mm EVA foam, which will be sandwiched in between them. Once you have all of your circles cut out, it's time to add the details. First, take your pattern and cut out the smiley face mouth and also the two eye holes. Then take a regular pencil and trace the eye holes onto your top sheet of Warbla along with the smiley face. For the other two layers, you'll only need to trace the eyes. Then take a heat gun and lightly heat up the Warbla to cut out the eye holes, making sure that it's nice and smooth. For the middle section here, I did cut out the smiley face, but you definitely don't need to do this step. The only thing that you need to cut out for the middle and bottom layer are the eye holes. Once you have all of the details cut out, it's time to actually connect your pieces. First, thoroughly heat up both pieces of Warbla on both sides. Then lay one sheet of Warbla down, then the layer of foam, and then the top layer of Warbla on top of that, heating it all up to seal it together. Here, as you can see, I do have the mouth hole going all the way through all three layers, but you definitely don't need to do this. A small cut only on the top layer will do just fine. And once you have heated up your Warbla thoroughly, you need to press down on all the edges, sealing the layers of Warbla together. Then take a sharp box cutter knife and trim off all of the excess Warbla. Once you've trimmed off all of the excess Warbla, you can also reheat the Warbla around the edges and then use your fingers or a smooth metal tool to smooth down all the edges and make sure everything is nice and smooth and that the foam is sealed safely inside. Once all the edges are nice and smoothed out, it's time to actually shape your mask. First, thoroughly heat it up on both sides using a heat gun. Then curve it around something that has a nice curved surface, like a roll of tape. Make sure to rotate which direction you're curving it so that it curves evenly down the sides and up and down. This way it curves nicely to fit your face shape. In addition, make sure you hold it in that curved shape until it's cooled down so it will stay that way. Once you're happy with how it fits your face, it's time to add some details. To do this, take your heat gun and heat up one small section of the mask at a time. Then using a sharp craft knife or a box cutter to add cracks and other small details to the surface of the mask. This makes it look much more worn and used and adds an extra layer of realism. Keep repeating this step, adding different thicknesses, densities, and shapes all over the surface of the mask until you're happy with how it looks. Now it is time to add a thin black fabric behind the eye holes so that you can still see through it, but from the front it looks nice, solid, and black. To do this, add some hot glue around the back of both of your eye holes and then cut out a small piece of the black fabric, laying it down and hot gluing it over the back of the eye hole. Make sure that you do this step after you've finished heating up any part of your mask because heat does not go well with this fabric and will melt it. But once you have finished that step and added your fabric, it's time to move on to priming. To prime up Warbler's Black Art, I like to use Elmer's wood glue, which is super cheap and easy to find and you can just add it with a brush. Make sure to get all around the mask, including all of the edges. After that first layer of primer has dried, take a fine grit of sandpaper and sand all over the surface of the mask, making it nice and smooth. And once you've finished sanding it and you're happy with how smooth it is, you can also add a second layer of primer, a little bit thinner this time, and then sand it once again. If you still want it to be smoother, you can keep repeating this process. When you're happy with how smooth it is and the wood glue has completely dried, it's time to move on to painting. I like to do a smooth black layer of acrylic paint over most of my builds, so that's what I started out with. Once that first layer of black is dried, it's time to add the white. White paint can be pretty desaturated, so you may have to do a lot of layers until you get smooth, even coverage. But once you feel like you have enough layers and you're happy with how it looks, it's time to move on to weathering. To weather this build, I mixed a dark gray acrylic paint and then watered it down quite a lot, using a small paintbrush to brush it into all the cracks and crevices around the mask, then smoothing it out and blending it with a damp paper towel. Keep repeating this process until you're happy with how it looks. Now for the attachments. 
To be able to hold this mask onto my face, I used some thick black elastic, hot gluing it to one side of the mask, measuring the length around my head, cutting it, and then hot gluing it to the other side, adding a bit more hot glue on top to firmly solidify it. And there you go, the first of Dream's masks is complete. Now on to the second mask. This one is a lot like the first, except that it is broken in half and has a lot more battle damage to it. But much like the first mask, the process is pretty much the same. You'll need one piece of two millimeter EVA foam in the exact size of the pattern, and then two pieces of Warbless Black Art, a little bit bigger than the pattern all the way around. Just like before, to cut out the EVA foam, use a sharp box cutter knife and to cut out the Warbless Black Art, lightly heat it up with your heat gun and then use a sharp box cutter to cut it out. Then cut out all the different detail pieces on the mask and use a silver sharpie or a regular pencil to trace all of the details, including all the cracks, the smiley face, and the eye onto the EVA foam and the layers of Warbla. For all the smaller cracks, you can also just use a craft knife to cut them out if a box cutter is a little bit too big. Then, just like before, you can also cut out the details on the layers of Warbla using a sharp craft knife after heating up your Warbla to cut out the eye holes. Make sure that you cut out the eye holes on every single layer while you only cut out the smiley face part on the top. Once you've cut out all the details and made sure that they all lined up, thoroughly heat up both pieces of the Warbla's black art, lay the piece of EVA foam in the middle, and then the top layer of black Warbla on top. Then heat up the Warbla thoroughly on both sides again and use your fingers to press down around the foam on all the sides, making sure to get it nice and pressed in. Once the foam has been firmly sealed inside, use your box cutter knife again to trim off all of the excess Warbla. You can then reheat it and use your fingers to make sure all of the edges are nice and smooth with no cracks along the sides. Something that I've also found helpful is to use a smooth metal tool like this, which is the handle of my craft knife, to make sure all the edges are nice and smooth. When the actual base build for your mask is done, you also need to curve it. Just like before, you can heat up the mask thoroughly on both sides and then use something rounded like a roll of tape to shape it. Now it's time to add all the details. This mask is a lot more cracked and damaged than the first one, and so the cuts that you make should be a lot deeper and more prominent. Just like before, just heat up small sections of the mask at a time and use a craft knife or a box cutter to add cracks and damage all over the surface and sides of the mask. To fill in the eye hole, just add more hot glue around the back around the eye hole of the mask and then use some of the black stretchy fabric to cover it up. Next up is priming. Take your wood glue and a paintbrush or whatever other primer you're going to be using and add a smooth, even layer all over the surface and sides of the mask. Once the layer of primer has dried, use a fine grit of sandpaper to sand over the entire surface of the mask, making it a lot smoother. Then add a second, thinner layer of primer and once it is dried, sand it once again. Keep repeating this process until you're happy with how smooth it is. Once your primer is all dry and sanded, it's time to start painting. Just like for the other mask, I like to start with a smooth layer of black acrylic paint. Then, of course, I go ahead and add the white. This took a lot of layers to get a smooth, even finish, but in the end, I was pretty happy with it. Once all of the white acrylic paint was dried, it was time to do weathering. For this, I watered down some gray acrylic paint and brushed it all over the surface of the mask, mostly in the cracks and crevices. I wiped most of it off again with paper towel and then repeated this process until I was happy with the weathering. For the attachments for this one, I used a much thinner elastic, which I connected to one side of the mask by the eye and then to the other side under one of the cracks. And with that, Dream's second mask was done. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope that you liked it, and thank you to Warbla as well for supplying the Warbla's black art that I use for this project and sponsoring the cosplay as well. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.